This entitled mum thinks she can pay her brother slave wages to babysit her kids because she is essential and he is not. Well, he's got a plan to turn the tables and make life a nightmare for her. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamp show. This makes me hurt a little because up to this point, my sister was the only one I could mildly get along with within my family. But I guess she is my mother's daughter, so the entitlement shouldn't have been a surprise. My sister and brother-in-law are both essential, cop and daughter, so they've needed someone to watch their kids now that school is cancelled and a lot of daycare services aren't around. And even then, the youngest one had been kicked out of two of them, and finding a new one is difficult due to that. So, I've been watching these kids four to six times a week, depending on their schedule, anywhere between seven to 12 hours a day. I was told to wait until they got paid, then told to wait for the stimulus check to come in and they'd pay me for it. At that point, and I do have the text, it was going to be $85 a week, regardless of that four to six times a week. Well, they got the stimulus check in, my sister gives me $55 and tells me that this was for the babysitting. I told her WTF? This wasn't what we agreed on. I was told that I should be grateful because she has been feeding me. No, she hasn't. I bought my own food and tended to have to buy the food that these kids were eating for lunch. I was told it was just like hanging out having fun, playing video games with my nephews. No, it was not, and she knows her kids better to know they're frickin' monsters. They both are destructive. It's a hassle since I have to chase one of them around all the time to prevent them from climbing shelves or from getting out the front door because these kids were never taught to mind. And when I refused to bring my gaming laptop for the older one to play anymore, I told him specifically if he wanted to play on it, he'd only touch the wireless mouse and keyboard and play it at the desk, but not to touch the laptop. So what does he do after getting bored with the one game he begged me to let him play? Pick up the laptop and run with it and drop it. I screamed at him, not my best moment, and he had the attitude of a teenage valley girl of, whatever, accidents happen, it's why they're accidents. If it breaks, you can just buy a new one. Of which I told him he would be the one to replace the $1,600 computer. But since that day, he's been a whining bag of crap about me not bringing it over for him to play with. I have to deal with these kids assaulting me all the time and not being able to do a thing about it. These kids are freaking monsters. And the only reason I agreed to do this was because she was my sister and she needed the help but I was supposed to be compensated for my time away from my own work. I work commission-based jobs at home, but I can't work on it around them as there's no pause for me to do it. I know it'll probably be crappy of me to do if I just don't show up the next few days until they fix paying me what they at the very least owed me. But on the other hand, I really just don't want to be around those kids. They need to be heavily medicated. So I waited some time so I wouldn't have to do multiple updates after a few people asked for them. Not sure if this is typically a subreddit that allows updates, but here it goes. To clear the air here, I am a dude. I know, how feminizing for a man to babysit. I had thought to correct this on the other post, but I was sort of amused at how many people assumed I was a woman. I spoke first to brother-in-law who had no idea that she wasn't paying me, so he was the one to pay me back for the weeks I had already done. He wasn't very happy with my sister. I didn't watch them for this last week. I did talk to my sister first off about how disrespectful that was to make a deal and renege on that deal, especially considering how ill-behaved her kids are. My sister told me she didn't think it was a big deal because I was getting unemployment and she assumed that because some people are getting unemployment and an additional 600 plus a week due to the virus, that doesn't make any sense to pay extra to people on unemployment and not those working. So I was making bank either way. She assumed wrong. I was not getting 600 extra a week. I wasn't on unemployment due to the virus, but it was part of what happened with my former employer before I went to work for myself, that they're paying for my unemployment for their many labor law violations. My unemployment through them is almost up anyways. Either way, it was odd for her to assume I was making $900 a week off unemployment without asking me if I was. 
She and brother-in-law had to switch around their shifts to watch their kids this week. Since I wouldn't show up, brother-in-law said she'd pay me directly if she wasn't going to, and that's when it became a three-way conversation. I let them know that their kid's behavior is really unacceptable, even for behaviorally challenged kids, which if they were, they'd be forced to have a childcare provider licensed for dealing with it. That's not the case with their kids. They just let them get away with too much. Ironically, last week I saw a hot bench episode with a mother who had a child who apparently told the babysitter to put him in his room, put up the gate if she were to not be in the room with him for any reason, so he couldn't get out. And this kid was 10, and it got me thinking of my nephews. So, I told them that they need to install more security measures against their kids. A high raise lock that the monkey can't reach, so he can't be running out the door possibly a gate to lock up one in a room if they're misbehaving, where there's nothing in there for them to break. I am not watching them this week either, but I told them I might reconsider if something can be done to make watching them not like being a security guard at a prison. My sister didn't like my suggesting that they needed to change their parenting, but my brother-in-law actually agreed. They had their argument and he said this is why they can't get babysitters or daycare for them anymore. They're out of control, definitely knew that, and that they just keep coddling them through it, definitely knew my sister was doing that. So there's a possibility I might watch them next week, if they have some sort of new way of mitigating their behaviors that could actually work. But that's not a yes yet. They would need these ways to start disciplining their kids either way, or they'll just be releasing awful teens onto the world. And we all know what happens next. So the next generation of entitled people occurs. First they become choosing beggars, and then when finally it's their time to start a family, they become the entitled parents themselves. Oh, the circle of life. I'm a female musician from Germany. Long time lurker, first time poster. Every summer I travel to the Baltic Sea and make street music. This is just one of many, many stories. One day in 2018, I was 26 at the time, I played in a shopping street in Rostock, Germany. It was just me and my guitar. Business was going quite well. There was this one guy who listened for a while and then put five euros into my guitar bag. Many people like to talk to me about my music for a while. Usually I chat a little bit and then go on with my music. However, this guy wouldn't let me alone. He wanted me to play a special song for him. I did. Afterwards, I tried to play my own music again, which he didn't like at all. Every time I started playing, he grabbed my guitar and would accidentally touch my breast in the process. He told me that since he gave me so much money, I'm supposed to play whatever he wants. He said that usually he gets more of women if he gives money too, and also that he usually sticks the money in other places than their guitar bag. I kindly asked him to leave, but he wouldn't. I switched places several times. He kept following me until another guy offered his help. Guy 2 made Guy 1 leave. Apparently Guy 2 was a musician as well. So he asked me if I was interested in busking together the next day. I kindly declined, but he kept on insisting that I would make more money with him. At this point, I just started playing music again, knowing that he would leave. He didn't. He stood directly behind me in order to protect me from Guy 1. I could feel his breath. Eventually, I gave up for the day. The next day, my male band colleague joined me. From then on, there were only nice people enjoying our music. That's just one of many, many stories. There are still so many men who think that you can buy a woman. All I want is to make my music, earn money for my holiday, and increase my audience. But something like this happens when I play alone almost every single time. Honestly, that would be so frustrating to have such a passion for music. And you know, it's really hard to break through in the industry. So there you are, literally going out to the streets to get people to hear your music. And then you get creepy jerks like that coming onto you. Yeah, definitely not the dream. I caught my neighbor spraying weed aside on my lawn in my fenced in backyard because she said she was sick of all the weeds and thought she was doing me a solid. Number one, I like dandelions, they are good for the bees. Number two, I have pet rabbits, dogs, cats, and a tortoise that I like to roam in the yard 
and all of them eat, or at least nibble, and lick the grass. So it's literally poisoning my pets. So anyway, I kick her the frick out and take all my pets inside. Now two of my rabbits are dead, and another is in critical condition. I'll never be able to let my pets outside again to eat the grass, because Weedicide takes forever to go away, because it can sit in the soil for who knows how long. And I'm worried that the dogs and cats might end up having a reaction too, since they also nibble the grass. Call me overprotective or overcautious, I don't care, I love my animals. So I'm suing her for damage to my property because it is now unusable for my animals, veterinary bills, and emotional damage due to the deaths of my two rabbits. I'm also trying to get the cops to pursue a case, at minimum criminal damage because she did basically poison them. But I doubt anything will come from it, because I have to prove ill intent, but they are pursuing her for criminal trespass. She's a Karen. I think she deserves it for thinking she had any right to be on my property at all, and especially because it's killed my pets. And now I don't know what to do about my lawn, because I'm not risking another animal's life by letting them out, at least unsupervised, for at least a year. However, my parents and my girlfriend think I'm being unnecessarily cruel because it was an accident and she thought she was just being a good neighbour and that I'm making it into a bigger deal than it is and should just ask her to pay for the vet bills. I don't care if she thinks that she was doing good. If you're bringing poison onto somebody else's property, you sure as heck better have gotten their consent before spraying it anywhere. I mean, yes, it was really bad that some of the pets died. But what if he had a niece or nephew playing in the backyard? That could have ended a lot worse. I don't think she was being a good neighbor. I think she was being a busybody. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.